Hello beautiful, welcome back to Nat's Beautiful Life. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you my July wrap up as well as my Reading Rush wrap up, which I will do that at the end of the video because there's 15 books to talk about and I'm just gonna bunch those together. If you're new to my channel, hi, my name's Natasha. I do videos on books, beauty, bullet journaling, and basically anything else I wanna make a video about. I would love it if you would subscribe, click the little notification bell, click like, and I never miss a video. Just be a part of my beautiful family here. All right, so because we have so many video or videos, <laughs> books to talk about, I just wanna get going right in there. Um, the July TBR that I filmed, um, I picked five books and those are like my five must reads, the five like that I really want to push myself to get through. It helps me get to um, reading goals and things I've set for myself. I will link all of that stuff down below, the July TBR, as well as the Reading Rush TBR and the uh, Reading Rush profile and all that stuff. So, um, of the five books that I chose to read I actually got through four of them the fifth one I started but I was just not in the mood for I believe I will pick it up again some other time but I just wasn't in the mood for it so I just put it away but I did finish the five so the first one of those was Renegades by Marissa Meyer um, I really like this book it is um, a superhero story I think I talked about it a little bit in the July TBR because I'd already started it um, but you're not looking for any groundbreaking anything um, as far as like superheroes and things like that um, but I do like especially towards the end when you get to the more political stuff uh, and how that stuff's working together that's where this really like shined for me but I did like the characters and I thought it was a fun read very entertaining and um, I gave it three and a half stars I guess I could go like 3.75 but um, it, it I liked it and I am going to continue with the series um, the next one is Nomadland and that is by Jessica Bruder I have a piece of paper with everything written down so if you see me looking down that's what it is um, this is a about people who live in RVs and vans and trucks and cars and not necessarily like the hipster move it, movement of like van life and all of that nomad living. Uh, it's more about people who've um, either unable to live on their retirement or have had hard times and lost their homes and things like that and then how they're living and also I learned a lot from this book not just about the van living and the RV living and the nomad living, but just stuff in general. Um, there's, for instance, Amazon has a program called Camper Force where they employ a lot of these people uh, during, uh, I think from like August to December for um, working in their warehouses because they need extra people. And so just learning about those aspects and how all that works, it was, it was really interesting and I, I do highly recommend it. Um, the next one, uh, The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Adier, and this is one that my dog Barry, and I did this because you can't see him, but he's right there, um, he picked for me to read. Uh, I'll link the Pups Pick My, my Books video. Um, this one is, I think if I'd read it when I was younger, I'd like it even more, but I did enjoy it. It was entertaining. Um, I think some parts of it dragged for me, but... All in all, I did like it. I gave it four stars because I was trying to think about what I would, if I were 15, 14 years old, what I would have um, rated this as. But I did enjoy it, and um, I'm not like chomping at the bit to read the next one, but I, I'm pretty sure I will. All right, the next one uh, is All My Friends Are Superheroes by, is it Andrew Kaufman? And this is a five star read for, was it five stars? No, I'll give it a four and a half stars. Four and a half stars. This book is so fun. And you literally can read it in one sitting. I think it's like 120 pages. Yeah, 120 pages. And it's, I mean, you can look at it as like slice of life. Like, like he's, he's explaining these superheroes, but they're really like just 
a lot of their superhero-ness is not worth anything. Like, they have, um, you know, Mrs. Per or the Perfectionist, and they have, like, oh, I don't know, just, just the weirdest things ever. And um, the hypnotist does something to uh, this normal human's um, fiancé where she can't see him anymore. And so... It's just a cute read. I really enjoyed it. You can read it in one sitting, and I do recommend it. It's fun. Um, my library only had it as ebook, so I read it as an ebook. But yeah, it's really good. I, I highly recommend it. Um, the next one was one I actually have been working on um, and finished. It was, it was an arc that I started like the week it came out. Every Tool is a Hammer, Life is What You Make It by Adam Savage. I have mentioned this and raved about this as I've been reading it the whole time, so I'm not going to do that again. But... Totally, I think I gave it, what did I give you? Four and a, I have a tools and hammer, four stars. Um, just because there are some things that are not universal, but there are most of the things, but there are, but most of the things are <laughs> universal in this book as far as like productivity and just working things out and all that. So I really enjoyed it and I highly recommend it. Also, if you're a parent, I think you should read this book because it talks about how important his parents allowing his imagination and encouraging him really helped him. All right, um, the next is ha The Happiness Project by Re Gretchen Rubin. Um, and this is, I think what really made me read this book um, was A, it was recommended by Michelle B. I'll link her channel down below. But um, once again, anytime something says happiness or something like that, I'm kind of wary about it. But she was looking at things as she she was a happy person. She had a good life, but she wanted to improve on things. And so she took specific areas of her life and every month she made those things a priority and made strategies to be better at them. And so um, I do think this is a very good book. I do um, recommend it if you're looking for a good nonfiction. Um, it's a pretty quick read. Um, but it's not as quick as some of the other nonfiction books by Gretchen Rubin. And I say that because she is doing a lot of life changing things. And so some of it you can get kind of stuck in with her philosophies and things like that. But I, I, liked, I liked it. And that's, that's a lot coming for me when it comes to a book like that. Because there's a lot of like self-improvement books that I will just quit because I'm like, this is just as fluff, this is no good. Um, so the fact that she was actually doing things and making like lists and saying, hey, I'm gonna try this this month and doing strategies. And that's what I really liked about it. I do recommend it. Um, aha, this one. This is Spontaneous by Erin Starmer. Uh, I found it at Ollie's for $1.99 several months ago. It's got a piece of paper in it. Um, but this book, I haven't heard anything about it, but I saw it there. And since I've seen it there, I've gone to other used bookstores and seen quite a few of them. Pick up this book. I mean, it's not life-changingly brilliant. It's not super, like, it's not going to want a Pulitzer. It doesn't make sense, but it was so entertaining. Like, I loved it. I love the main character. She is snarky and just real and just like a teenager for real. Like, it was like, I can't believe it was a dude writing this girl. Um, it was so good. And then just so many surprises, like, I don't want to tell you. But basically what this is about is people in her senior class start spontaneously combusting and you just never know who it's going to be or when it just happens. And then like the whole world's eyes go to this community and people are trying to figure out the government's like corralling them and doing things to figure it out, I guess. I don't know. Um, but the book itself was entertaining and I did enjoy it. You just, Trust me, if you want something that's gritty but fun, go for it. Um, the next one I want to talk about is Circe. Um, I actually own this book, but I gave it away so someone else could read it. Um, the writing, Madeline Miller is an amazing writer. I can tell you that right now. I love the writing. I thought it was wonderful. 
I am not into Greek mythology. I am not into pantheism where it's like a bunch of gods and things. I just, it's not my thing. Um, so those parts of the book were really cringy for me and the first hundred pages was like, do I want to finish this or not? And the only reason why I read it at all was because it was our book club book of the month. Um, but I will say with her writing and thinking about Greek mythology and things like that, I always, you know, you've heard like, this is the God of war. This is the God of this, blah, blah, blah. But in her writing, she actually made you understand and see it as like, they were a family, like how they related to each other and what they did. And so her writing was really wonderful and you found yourself rooting for Cersei a lot. So um, as far as you're into that thing, then it's very well written. Um, and I would hope that um, Madeline Miller would write some other things, but I know she is a professor of Greek mythology and I think Latin and something else. Um, so it makes sense that she writes books like this, but she did a wonderful job. But like I said, not really my cup of tea. And I don't think I even rated it because I'm not really the person to rate that book. <laughs> I love the writing, but I really did enjoy the subject matter. Okay, so that's my books with just reading. So now we're gonna move on to The Reading Rush. Now, as of the July TBR, I finished four of the five books that I actually had set out to finish with my Reading Rush TBR, <laughs> which is linked down below. I mentioned three books. Of those three books, I only read one, but I did read seven for The Reading Rush. So I don't know why my chin is itching. My eyes also feel like someone has put sriracha in them. They're burning and I don't know why. Anyway, okay, so let's move on to my reading rush. All right, I'm gonna move some things around here. All right, so the first one that I read and the one that I took the most time reading and I fell in love with it was Nevermore, which I did mention that, The Trials of Morgan Crow. This one met a lot of the criteria for the reading rush. So, it was a book with purple on the cover, um, a book I meant to read last year but didn't, uh, an author's first book, a non-human character, five words or more, and the title. So it covered a lot of uh, bases for me and I really enjoyed this book and one of my five for August is going to be Wondersmith, which is the next book. Um, I'm not going to do a separate August video of like my top five that I'm going to be reading um, because I'm doing this now. Um, so what I'm going to do is on Instagram, if you're not following me there, do that. And I will have those books there for you to see and we'll see how I do. <laughs> for um, August with that. But I highly, highly recommend that book. I loved it and I think I gave it four and a half stars just because there was a couple of things. I was like, when did this happen? When did, huh? But really well done. I really did enjoy it. Um, the next book was The Lorax by Dr. Seuss. I read this in the same spot the whole time. I should even put a picture here of that spot. I went to Barnes and Noble and sat in the children's spot and read this. And that is my book to movie adaptation, also a non-human main character. And I love the movie The Lorax. I love this little book. It's so great. And I think it's, it's just a great book to read for children and to understand that unless someone like you cares a whole lot, nothing's gonna change. It's not. And I, I just loved it. So um, that one's a five star read for me. Thank you. Um, the next two I also read was at Barnes & Noble. I did I'll Catch You If You Fall by Mark Sparing, which is a children's book, and Where the Wild Things Are by Maurice Sendak. Both of these are children's books. They both have, um, well, one of them has some non-human characters, and they all have five words in the title, and they all went towards my seven books in a week. Um, I really liked I'll Catch You If You Fall. That's a really cute book for, for children. Where the Wild Things Are, I think that kid is a brat. Always have, always will. Thank you very much. Um, then we got some graphic novels in because they're made for readathons. And I love these. I got um, I Hate Fairyland, volume, is this one? Which one? This is volume one. And I Hate Fairyland, volume two. And that is Fluff of My Life. Main character Gertrude is um, like six or seven years old, gets 
to go to Fairyland and normally kids take a day or two to find the key and go back home. So they come into Fairyland, they get a quest, they get to do that quest and they get their key and they go home. Gertrude has been there for 27 years and she still never find the, found the key because she does not have one of those fluffy like, you know, tra la la minds and she never did as a child either and she's still there and she's stuck there and she hates it and she's a mess and her little, like she was given a little guide friend when she first got started, all the kids are and he's like, so tired of being with her and he's, she's affected him so much that he's like flying around with a cigar in his mouth. It's just, it's not for children, but it's funny. Um, the other one I did um, was one I grabbed at Barnes Noble. Um, I have some nieces, nephews, dozens, dozens or cousins that should be nieces or nephews, but they're not, so they're dozens. And so I like to, if I see a book that I think looks really cute and I think they would like it, I like to read it first because there's some stuff in some children's books that have no business being children's books. And especially when you get young adult books that are considered new adult, that is not something for like a child to read. <laughs> but uh, I grabbed this one, it's the Carnival of Wishes and Dreams. And this is a really cute one. Um, feel very comfortable giving this to whoever is um, within the age range. Um, very sweet like coming of age story and friendship story and it's not like all fluff and love and stuff. They're like they have issues that they're trying to overcome and um, they're in this town that has had seen better days and then um, there was a fire so one of the girls her father owns the factory. The second one her father was a firefighter who died saving the third father who um, worked there so I um, highly recommend it it's very very cute and it will give you some feels um, and I this was my seventh book for the breeding rush but I didn't actually get the badge because it was 12 10 the next day like Monday when I finished it and I was being honest all right so those are the 15 books that I finished um, I did do a couple of like mangas and I'm looking to mangas I started um, another book and then I had the book that I DNF'd for the moment so I did read and pick up a couple of other things within the month but those are the ones that I finished this video was super long so I'm gonna cut it out now thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you again very soon right here on next beautiful life have a great day gorgeous